for those of you who um, have ever been to tropical forests or studied them, those of you doing uh, environmental studies, you'll know that uh, in general, the way we think about tropical forest soils is that they're, they're very um, uh, fragile soils. They don't hold much organic matter. They're not very fertile. The lush vegetation that you see is kind of misleading in the tropical forest because the vast majority of the nutrients are held in the living biomass rather than in the soils. Here in temperate forests, most of the nutrients are held in the soils. And so if you clear the forest, if you cut it, if you burn it, then um, you can very quickly lead to very serious erosion. And it can take years, decades, even centuries for the fertility of the land to recover. And the Amazon is a case in point. The Amazonian rainforest is largely characterized by those uh, poor tropical soils. But in the Amazon, in about 10% of the total area, you have a different kind of soil. It's this dark soil, which uh, in Portuguese is called terra preta do indio, which means the dark soil of the Indians. And these are very rich, very fertile soils, as you can see, deep soils. They've got a lot of organic matter. They retain moisture uh, very well. And you can clear the land above and grow crops on these soils year after year after year without uh, producing the terrible uh, effects in terms of soil erosion that you get on these other soils. And for a long time, soil scientists were puzzled about why you have these big patches of terra preta uh, across uh, Amazonia. And finally, uh, I believe um, it was the late 80s that they held a conference in Brazil and kind of came up to a consensus about what, what had created these soils. They were created by people. These are anthropogenic soils, soils created by humans starting a couple millennia ago through a process that sometimes now is described as slash and char agriculture, where they would uh, partially burn uh, the vegetation, plow the charcoal into the soil, and in so doing, they changed the structure, chemistry, and indeed the biology of the soils. There's soil microorganisms that are found in this terra preta that aren't found in these soils. And one of the remarkable things about terra preta, I'm told, is you can take a barrel of this stuff, put it somewhere else, dump it on the ground, and it starts to grow. It starts to expand by virtue of those microorganisms. So that's an example of what sometimes is called soil banking. You know, we often think of farmers as, or at least many North American environmentalists, think of farmers as the enemy of the environment. You know, they're going to grow food and it's going to, you know, erode the topsoil and, you know, destroy the land ultimately. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen. It's a big issue, uh, particularly in the Midwestern United States. But farming can actually also increase the quality, the depth, the fertility of soils, the resilience of soils. And this is an example of uh, such an effort, sometimes called soil banking. 